<laughs> Welcome back once again to the Epic Trash Show. I'm your host, Bruce, here with my co-host, lead artist, and resident comic expert, Crow. I have a hat. <laughs> also with me, we got chief editor and videographer, Chris. I also have a hat. I, as well, have a hat. So that, that's the thing. Anyways, thanks for watching and listening. Um, please hit us up if you got ideas on what we could do to improve, like this intro, probably. Um, let's see... If you want to hit us up, you can hit us up at uh, the epic trash at groupmail.com. That's our email. Um, or you can hit us up on Twitter at epic trash show. So we'll have those links in the description so you can hit us up. Yeah. Uh, and you can comment on the epic trash YouTube channel where there is already one comment. <laughs> We have one comment. We have one whole episode. comment. Woo, we're getting it's six big, likes. guys. It's, six a pretty, likes. it's a pretty good comment, though. Yeah. It's like my catchphrase. <laughs> it is. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So that's uh, the, any other social medias we got set up? or that's No, I'm still working on it. I mean, I have, I have a Facebook page up, but... Okay, yeah, that, that'll be in the description. Did you yeah. invite everyone you know on Facebook? <laughs> Every single person. Isn't that what people do? Like when they start a Facebook page. If you really like, want to annoy people, <laughs> I would. Yeah, I yeah. definitely would. All right. So you get, uh, look forward to being annoyed. Um, so we'll, we'll try and help <laughs> that out. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, so and we should. Well, let's talk about housekeeping. Yes. Any, for housekeeping. Any, do you want? Oh, uh, we do have an extra special something. What's oh well, we're we're gonna order a new table. I spent two and a half hours today looking for tables in town, and was unsuccessful. I mean, there was stuff, but it's really expensive. Yeah. And so we're, I'm going to be getting a new table, and I think Bruce and Crow are going to be doing something with the backdrop um, or our back wall. And also for the YouTube channel, I'm going to be time coding or time stamping every all our segments so like when we're talking about a certain news story that's going to have a timestamp so if you go into the description down below you'll be able to look for things you want to listen to or see i guess and then you can skip whatever you don't you don't want to watch <laughs> all of our unenthusiastic parts you can just skip right past them yeah yeah so basically if there's anything you want to see you can just go down there with my super tasty clickbait title yeah. Skip the riffraff here. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, so we're filming this uh, on the 4th. So it's our first show of the month. So uh, we're just going to go through all the uh, the games that are coming out in February. So um, we got on the 8th, that's God Eater 3. On the 12th, we have Trials Rising, which I played the demo of, and it's super fun. I enjoy that game. Uh, Crackdown 3 comes out on the 15th. We got uh, Far Cry New Dawn, which is pretty much the expansion for Far Cry 5. Uh, that's also coming out on the 15th. And last but not least, on the 15th, we got Metro Exodus. So that's coming out. Uh, 22nd, Anthem, which uh, the demo went the first through the third, and I had a chance to try that out. Um, so uh, no spoilers on what's going on with that. That'll be later. Um, 26th. We got the Anno 1800, which is an Ubisoft kind of like uh, SimCity type type of game, which has like a, based in a historical setting, like the last two Anno games. So that's what we got for February. And now, into the news! Well, the first thing to talk about today would be um, that uh, Sony is now, as of next month, they're discontinuing the time free... Um, they're discontinuing the, the freebies on PS Plus for PlayStation 3 and Vita. Um, on the other hand, they're also expanding the cloud storage from 10 gigs to 100 gigs for every PS Plus user. Uh, so it's kind of a, I don't know, I mean, in my opinion, it's, 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 I don't see why, why not. I can see a lot of people who still have PS3s that would be kind of upset about that, but at the same time, it's like we're five years or so into the PS4 life cycle, so it's... I well, mean, I know they're sunsetting um, the Vita, like that's... Um, yeah, well, that, that's, right yeah, that's been, that's been a thing for a while, so yeah. I'm, I'm so amazed that they supported it as long as they did. Mm -hmm. it, it was a great console, it was a really great console, and I wish they would have pushed it more because it, it had a lot of potential. 
Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, like the PS3 users as well, um, you know, they, they might get a little bit bummed out by that. But uh, at the same time, like, I don't know, time to move on. Maybe maybe they'll offer um, better titles for PS4 at this point because they won't have to focus on the PS3 and Vita anymore. Yeah. Um, I mean, it was a pretty good run, to be fair. Yeah, yeah, a long time. Yeah, and they they never they never used to be like that anyway. I remember like before PS3 um, and like the PS2 days and stuff. Uh, once once the new console came out, it was pretty much like the previous ones got very little support or marketing time or anything like that at all. So the right. PS3 had a very very long lifespan. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was seven years from when it released to when the PS4 released, and then another five years on top of that that the PS3 kept getting support. So. It had a great run. It was a good console, but time to throw in the hat. Yeah. Well, uh, next up on the the news, we got uh, apparently someone in France was busted because oh, <laughs> they, no. they they tried to buy a PS4 from their uh, their local uh, I guess grocery store because they. Well, you know how there's uh, there's the the tags that you can when you go to the fruit section you put fruit in a, in a basket or like a bag and you weigh it and they get a sticker. Well, this guy put his PS4 on the scale and got a sticker and slapped that right on the uh, on the on the barcode there. And then when he went to uh, to check out at the self checkout, he beeped right through and and paid about six dollars for his PS4 and. Uh, <laughs> You know, he would have gotten away with it if he didn't have the gall to try and do it the very next day at the same store. So he's he is uh, he's facing a little bit of jail time for that one. It's surprising that he actually got away with it. Yeah, like the, the first, first time, time, right? Yeah, that kind of blew my mind. I mean, I but. guess it, I guess it doesn't surprise me too much. Like I've seen, I've I've heard stories of people getting away with stealing like full HD TVs and stuff from like Walmart before. You know, <laughs> but like that's that. I mean, it's. To his credit, that's a little clever. Yeah, the first time it is. Yeah, it's so clever to try repeat it. Yeah, he time. got it for nine euros or about ten bucks. <laughs> that's pretty that's great. Pretty, yeah, it's a good deal. <laughs> nice, a great deal. Yeah, so it's about, it's about how much the Xbox One is actually worth. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> yeah, or the or the PlayStation One, the re. The one that they remade that oh, thing. The one with all the games on That's it. That's about how much oh, I'd yeah. pay for that. That yeah. the, the, the list. The, the emulator. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ridiculous. The PS1 emulator mini. Yeah. Um, but uh, speaking of PlayStation, PlayStation Five backwards compi- compatibility has been rumored. Um, they were searching patents for the the PlayStation, uh, and um, they found that Sony had taken out. Well, it wasn't Sony. It was actually, uh, let me see, let me find the guy's name. But uh, they they were basically trying to do patents for um, software that would look up if you can, you know, help me out here. If you can. Be right? No. It's basically, it's like a, it sees if a legacy application is running. So mm-hmm. it basically, it can see if like an old, an old game is is being launched and then it can use they need that in order to boot up the emulator so but the reason that uh that could have been you know anything that sony's working on because they do more than just playstation but um i guess mark cerny is the guy who uh he's the lead architect of the playstation 4 so that stands to to reason that that would be what that's for. It certainly wouldn't surprise me at all if it was if it was like I, I get the suspicion that that at the most it's going to be PS4 emulation mm-hmm. and not anything before that except for maybe PS1 because PS1 is super easy to emulate. But the like the PS3 had a very different hardware architecture. The PS4 is like just on a PC standard PC chipset. Right. So like the PS5 is probably going to be built very similarly just with like updated. Equipment. So yeah, like, I feel like they learned their lesson. Yeah, with the cell uh, processor. Yeah, so I don't know. I I feel like the PS3 emulation maybe not so much, but definitely at least PS4 emulation would be not too hard to pull off. Yeah, hardware wise and software wise. Yeah, that'd be good. Then they could probably, um, you know, if if you owned it for PlayStation 4, you get the PlayStation 5, and then you could um, 
potentially run like I don't know Metro games from yeah. the old olden consoles. Yeah. <laughs> like Metro Exodus. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. I'm trying so hard here. <laughs> I'm new. Give me a break. Um, but yeah, so that's uh, that's my news story. Next in the news, we've got Metro Exodus. <laughs> <laughs> so Metro Exodus got into a little bit of heat recently. Um, I guess the uh, there was something involving the um, Epic Games launcher. Um, they, yeah. They were pretty much like... Uh, They've got like an exclusivity deal, if I remember correctly. Yeah, so they were basically the leading up to it. Metro has been on sale for PC through Steam for months and months now. But then event like uh, I don't know if it was like a week ago or so, they yeah. just pulled. They pulled all their uh, the 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 licensing. I guess they yeah. basically bowed out of Steam and they are now exclusively going through the Epic launcher. Mm -hmm. So people who pre-ordered the game can still get it through Steam, they're gonna honor that, but everyone else has to buy it through the Epic Store. Yeah, yeah, it was it was kind of a weird move to, to announce that so close to the launch. Yeah. Um and that's probably that's that's, that's the worst part about that's it. That's why that's why everybody's so upset about it. Right. And uh and then of course the one of the developers um being really saucy about the response uh, said like, well, if you if you gamers don't watch out, if you PC guys don't watch out, we won't launch on PC on, uh, in our future titles. Yeah, it'll be console exclusive. Yeah, and and uh, I mean, it was one developer's word, and he was probably just like super frustrated at the yeah. time. So I'm, yeah. I'm I would give him the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. Um, but you know, Epic made it a statement. The or optics, not. the optics did not look good. <laughs> right. And so they they kind of they um I think it was uh the the publisher, um. They they came out pretty quickly and said like no 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 we'll keep supporting PC don't worry about that right and so they corrected that real fast yeah they they yeah they went back on that a little bit but um I bet you that developer got canned uh, I don't know maybe it, maybe it's maybe a suspension yeah it sounded they said he was he was passionate about the game and yeah. so um like to to his credit like I can totally understand that yeah like you know you put a lot of effort into something like that into a project, a passion project, and then like, right. you know, something that's not even in your control yeah. is is making everybody kind of hate on it. Right, that's got to be super frustrating, yeah. but uh, I don't know, so Epic is now now the new host of that, so that's, that's going to be fun. Um, so if you're a PC user, enjoy having to use... Uh, or download another launcher for your console. If you and developers, take game. a breather yeah. before you post. Although that's that's worthwhile for... I, I'm actually kind of happy about that because Steam takes 30% of all, all revenue. Oh, and, really? Yeah. I didn't even and know. Epic takes 13%, per, 13%, I think. So that's a really drastic... No, it's 18%. Um, so that's a really drastic cut that's almost half. Yeah. So and a lot of these um the smaller developers don't even have the money to like you know the times are tight in the game industry. So competition. Yeah. Well, I think it, I think it's good right now to have uh, Epic Games um to be providing a launcher. I think it's just what happens if they start to take over the market? Well, the yeah, other I thing, mean, well, Steam had the market cornered for years. Right. So yeah. now this is, in my opinion, it's good for the consumer. Well, that's because... what I mean, but what happens if Epic Games starts to corner the market? Will it stay at 18%? Probably you know, they're, not. For yeah, now, they're definitely not. trying yeah. to... And that's why I said I, I think, think it's good for now. I, yeah. I think that ultimately, like in the long term, it'll probably, it, what'll ha probably happen is Steam will probably reduce their amount to mm -hmm. try and get a little bit closer and compete more with Epic. Right. Yeah. And then yep. it'll ultimately end up being a kind of a win win. Um, for developers for, at least. For developers yeah. And, yeah, and publishers. Although, if they could, the, you know, anything that they they stand to make more through, they could pass, theoretically, pass the savings on. So, who knows? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that'd be good. So, um, Sea of Thieves as uh, crossplay. That's always been a thing, but now because there's a new PvP update coming out, they decided to um, basically split the player base. So you have the option to either go with the entire pool of players or to just go because there's crossplay between PC and Xbox. People with a controller will be at a disadvantage, so they can opt in to controller only lobbies or mouse that's and keyboard nice. only lobbies. Yeah, that's so. nice. Because that was that's like a huge thing with um, 
somebody that I actually played PUBG with mm -hmm. well, uh, is we were like always talking and it wasn't about PUBG but it was about console games and then um, players having the like mouse and keyboard yeah because you're uh, always going to dominate if you have the mouse and keyboard right but people were having that um, mouse and keyboard set up for their console games yeah and then so they would be people would be playing uh, mouse and keyboard against players who were playing on a joystick or right. a, a console controller right and we actually I mean we got into a lot of discussions about it before but yeah um, I think it's definitely something that it makes you it gives you the competitive edge having for at least for first person shooters or any kind of shooters yeah. just having a, a mouse and keyboard definitely gives you a little bit of an advantage in my totally seems to in my opinion I mean, uh, well, uh, to throw back to PS5 real quick, I'll be surprised if PS5 doesn't have keyboard and mouse support exactly for the reasons of crossplay and stuff because Sony's Sony's getting into the crossplay market now finally, mm -hmm. um, yeah. and so That's about you know they'll, they'll, they'll probably do the same thing and and they'll probably in order to you know um, make it a little bit easier in that same field uh, between choosing lobbies like they'll probably have because I know that the, I know that the PS4 actually has keyboard mouse support for some things mm -hmm. so and maybe even some games I can't remember that story exactly I saw it a while back but um, but I, I can totally see that being a thing that Sony would implement for their next gen console at least um, yeah I thought like I thought a lot of the setups were kind of like that I saw or at least that I was talking about with a friend of mine was kind of like backdoor um, setups for your console to, to hook up with a mouse and keyboard so I don't know I don't know if it, it'll be it will even be detectable to a certain to a certain degree as if you if you can actually choose to play in a in a controller well, lobby versus a keyboard and mouse lobby. I, I do know that Xbox just recently announced that they're uh, going to allow for mouse and keyboard on on Xbox. Yeah. So, which uh, isn't surprising something. because they're trying to cross platform right everything. all over the place. Yeah, yeah they're put, they're putting Xbox uh, Live on uh, the Nintendo Switch now. Yeah. And, so that's today. and Android and yeah, iOS. And iOS, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's which weird. Is, yeah, which is pretty interesting. Well, that was actually something I was going to talk about, but I decided to opt into something else. Well, give us the details if you know anything about it. I mean, that is pretty much the details. Yes. But because I, I think they're, I mean, that's that's kind of what's being talked about now. But then, but how, um, how the does that story, work? Well, that's, the implementation is kind of an unclear. Oh, but they I said they were going to bring it up in another... <laughs> uh, Developers conference, like game developers conference. I think or I think they're so. only doing that. I, I think they're doing that mainly because the PS4 has outsold the Xbox One like twice as much. Mm. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> ninety-one million to like forty right. something. Right, million. and that's why Sony is still like staunch against all crossplay stuff. Yeah. So that anything that involves well, they, they loosened up on that. Did they? Yeah, they did. They said that they were going to do it, and they, was, they started introducing it, and in, uh, I think they, one of the games they did was Rocket League, if I'm not mistaken. Rocket League um, and uh, Fortnite. Yeah, yeah, I think they've been talking about Fortnite a lot, doing with the, with the crossplay. Mm -hmm. But that's that was that's my concern too. Is is um, is this really a good idea for Microsoft to kind of focus their? Is it a good idea to focus their resources in kind of this crossplay? between multiple platforms or is it going to be something similar to when they try to do like the home media you know yeah, setup right. where it's like okay you, that really wasn't that successful I mean, so do honestly, you really want to try to spread out in another kind of I mean because it's kind of the same idea where it's you're going for you know I guess it's a little bit different where one is kind of like multi functionality and then yeah. another but it's still kind of like you're, you know you're starting to spread into other platforms and into you know other devices you know what I mean yeah you know I think I think what would have probably helped Xbox more is if Microsoft actually put some more focus on better like first party exclusives mm -hmm. because oh, like yeah that's Sony's I mean, trouncing them yeah with the first party for that, sure that, that's that's that had to have played some kind of major role I mean I can't even think of anything that they can't come out with this year that's been really notable that is there like I know a PlayStation had a bunch the, the, and you know, PS4 has like yeah, um, got, has God of Wars Days and, Gone, I think. Yeah, Days, yeah, that's coming up. And that's, soon, that's exclusive. Yeah. And yeah, it's, yeah, it's like I can't. Sea of Thieves was about the only one that that was notable, and that one launched terribly. Like no yeah. one, it had no content when it yeah. launched. Yeah, Sea of Thieves is gross. Yeah, but you know what? It's way better now. <laughs> yeah, that's what they've I've heard. Pumped in it, and that's the thing. Is like I feel like that's what most most games are now. Is like 
you know, they, they start off real rough because yeah. everything's a service now. So it's like, right. well, just get it out there and people will buy it regardless. Yeah. <laughs> it seems like. Wait, like what, what was the game we were just talking about before we started? The um, the developers who did uh, Beyond Two Souls. Yeah, Detroit. Quantic Dream. Yeah, so, but they, so I just read too that they are actually going to uh, start... Uh, I guess per, uh, developing and publishing games on all consoles and not just yeah, PlayStation all oh, right. Yeah, not which is I mean, kind of just aligns with what you guys were talking about with right. um, PS PlayStation exclusives. But that's a, that's the thing too. I mean, if they, if, if crossplay starts like and it starts to really I, become successful, I mean, I think we're not going to see as many exclusives anyway. Yeah. I mean, because possible. it's like, well, I mean, that would be the idea. That would be like, I, I would think the logical business move would be, okay, well, if people can play it on PC. Well, typically, you know, you're only gonna you're only gonna implement crossplay if the market right. corners you in order to do it. So as right. long as somebody's on top, they're prob probably not gonna play nice unless right. like you get enough people who are freaking out about it like with Fortnite they pretty much forced Sony's hand on that one mm -hmm. because Sony had the the issue with their the names where it's like if you yeah. had that name it would steal it and then you couldn't right. play Fortnite on right. anything else which, I don't I don't yeah. really think that uh, I don't really think that console exclusives are really going to go anywhere as long as consoles st still exist because right. yeah console exclusives are like crossplay or no crossplay exclusives are really where the in the biggest sellers are like you can't yeah. you can't sell a console if 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 you have like when you when you have a competition that has like spider-man last of us god of war yeah. and all these other heavy hitters yeah. and you've got like sea of thieves all right just like well, sunset overdrive we have halo yeah. that was and so we have halo back. and yeah. we have halo and god of war and that's not to trash on xbox like i got nothing against xbox i've had a 360 yeah. i would i would buy a one if i could but it's I mean, just it's arguably a, like the not that the console's better, but the releases have just been this year have well, been yeah. way better for yeah, the exclusives. I mean, so, yeah, I think the exclusives on Sony are always just a lot better. But I also think they're I personally and I'm not trying to be like biased or or like uh yeah, biased, but it's like um I just think the games that the exclusive that comes out are are for intended for a much a mature audience, or, or and at least a more serious players. I mean, players who want like depth and who want you know really good quality Story and games, yeah. And, yeah, and not just flash and you know. Unlike your battle royale trash type games, <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, but well, I would just before we cut over, I was just gonna say that even a friend of mine just picked up um, a PlayStation and just started playing the, the first Last of Us. Oh, yeah. And they were just—they were actually just really excited to, because they had been how much of a were, garbage game it was. No, <laughs> but they had been playing. They had been an Xbox player for a long time, but they were excited to to be, start to play a lot of the the exclusive games that they hadn't been able to play. And I only brought up Sunset Overdrive before because that's been the only Xbox exclusive game that I've really wanted to play. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? It's on my my Steam list now because they added it to Steam. Oh really? So um, yeah, it's, it's, it's like twenty bucks. The thing about the thing about it is, is that like we we all know that Xbox is capable of it. Yeah. Like there's nothing stopping them. They could they could make exclusives that could easily compete with a PS4 exclusive. And that's one of the things that kind of boggles my mind is like why aren't they doing it? I think right. because with the Xbox they kind of doubled down on indie developers and making it super open for them. Yeah, but PS4 is pretty indie open too. Right. I so, I think they just they doubled down and didn't actually like procure procure enough AAA. Titles they didn't fork out the cash for that. They're like, well, we'll open up the. Well, I mean, I also I also remember when the one was being announced and stuff, and they were talking yeah. about how they wanted to make it like an all-in-one media console, and right? Focusing on that and like, yeah. But like at the same time, it's like that that was kind of a flop idea. So like, get back into first-party exclusives like ASAP, right? You know, and now it's been five years and there's they still got very little. Yeah. And I'm like, what are you what are you doing? Yeah. Microsoft, what are you doing? <laughs> you have, you yeah. have Halo. Yeah. So I guess we can definitely say that this is a, a PlayStation podcast. <laughs> We're definitely leaning towards Sony. Yeah. Which is which is funny because if you do we brought up PUBG earlier and so if you are playing PUBG on PS4, yeah. the new map Vikendi is also now available. Is it? Yes, which is the fourth map that they've made. And I I actually play PUBG on PC, um, but I have noticed that on Android? <laughs> no, I have played it on mobile, but it's it's really hard. Yeah, I bet. like compared, it's just they just came out with PUBG Lite. 
I don't know. What they didn't hear about that? that? Is, no. Yeah, they just they just announced it. It's too, it's supposed to be a lot uh, a lot filtered down. It's a super super small version of the game that should run a lot better on on a mobile. Low, yeah, on mobile and uh, and light hardware. Yeah. So. Right. Okay. Well, so, so since we're talking about PUBG, so my news story was actually about PUBG and the, a new tool that they've implemented. Um, I guess it's called the PUBG Report. And basically what it is is um, it's, I guess, uh, a tool that you can use to see when popular streamers uh, have killed you or killed a certain person or have been killed by a certain person. And it was in the news. How would they know, though, like that... I I am not totally I'm not totally sure because they really don't go into it too much in the article. But so I, I guess just, I I think that it's just an algorithm that they're using that when that maybe with kill feeds. Is it but is inside. it in the game or do? You? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's in the game. Oh, that's cool. So you can just like see all the times you just got owned. Yeah, pretty much if you want to. And they're basically kind of some people are saying it's really cool because then you can see when you can call out hackers pretty well with that. Well, the the thing is, is that they've actually been doing a really good job with like the anti-cheat um, software that they're using, and actually, it's really funny because it, it, this isn't recent, but even a while ago, it, if you're not really into PUBG that much, you might not know. But even in, in China, they were actually like arresting people who were oh, hacking yeah. in PUBG. I knew it was yeah. a problem in China, like yeah. China number one. Well, like, Ch that, that was a meme, you know. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. I, I just think because the player base is so big in China that it, that's right. kind of why it's more prevalent there. That makes sense. But it is nice because you can actually report players, but it, it's hard because like the kill cam. Um, that you can view after you you, you were killed. Obviously, mm -hmm. it, it's just kind of it's not. It doesn't seem up to date, and it seems like there's some kind of lag that's connected with it. So it's it's kind of hard to see. But sometimes it's like super obvious. Yeah. Like I mean, I remember there was a time where I somebody killed me with an M16, and they were like, you know, a thousand kilometers or a thousand meters away or something. Like something just completely ridiculous, and they iron sighted me with like four or five bullets, and I was like, okay. Oh no. Um, but that also kind of goes along with something else that you can use the new tool for is they'll actually show highlights and, and clips through it of like um, like the longest kills uh, and things like that, like kind of just kill highlights from the week or, or from recent activity. Um, and some people are also thinking that it potentially can be problematic for people who are using it for stream sniping. And I don't really see how that's like a huge problem because I feel like if you're just watching someone's stream, I don't know how that could be any better than trying to navigate through something else to to see you know to see when. I mean, maybe if it's more up to, but I don't like I don't I don't see it being any more up to date than someone's stream. Is like is it really like is the new like the PUBG report? Is it going to be like I mean, is it literally going to be updated like simultaneously when kills happen? Like I just don't know if it'll be that fast. Ah, uh, yeah. Compared I don't. to somebody who's running a stream on, like we were talking about, like a twenty or thirty second delay, right? Even. Like their Twitch or whatever. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, I feel like because they were saying even if you're in a certain area in PUBG, let's just say you're on Ar the Arangel map and like your streamer, the streamer that you think you're in a game with or you know you're in a game with is in Pachinki. <laughs> like if you get there, you know, and if they're in Pachinki. And you get there like 10 seconds later, even if their stream's on a delay, it's like, what's the likelihood that they've left Pachinki yet anyway, or left that area? Because like, as we know, the way Battle Royales work, or the most popular ones, is that they have the circle and it gets smaller and smaller. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I guess if you play your cards right, you know what I mean? You're going to run into to whoever you're trying to stream snipe. Sure. Eventually. I mean, I don't, I don't know. So I just don't know if that's really a valid argument. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's... I, I just don't think it really is. I wonder if that new battle royale has those the closing, the closing. Uh, you know, oh, the circle. apex, the apex legends. Yeah, I have no idea because it did just come out today. But I'm, I, I wish I had known so that I could have played it before we did this podcast. But potentially, I will play it and record yeah. some gameplay, and then we can just play it right now. I'm sure that's probably how that how that works is the the closing circle. But I know it's made from the people. Who made Titanfall? Mm -hmm. And they officially announced that Titanfall three is not in the works because they've been working on this. So Apex Legends. Yeah. So you said you saw. I, I watched a little gameplay before we started the stream because this is the first that I actually heard about it. Yeah, I watched about twenty minutes of it on Twitch. And so, so what did you see and what did you think? Uh, it looks like um, pretty much 
Overwatch heroes in um, in like Blackout or PUBG. It's it looked very much the the graphics look very much like Call of Duty. Mm -hmm. But um, what what ha like how does the the speed of the game actually look? Because I feel like um, the the Call of Duty battle royale is like very fast. It uh compare when you compare it to PUBG, is PUBG yeah. is very slower. It's, it's more on the more it's tactical. it's more on the Call of Duty side. That oh, was it? like it was more twitchy run and gun. Mm -hmm. Um, when I saw the people. Well, so here's the thing is, instead of having, it's it's squads only right now, and it's three right. players, so you have yeah. to pick your, your hero, yeah. and so it's it's more of a, a hero type shooter can as well. Can heroes be repeated um, through the different squads, is one of my they, questions. They can, um, okay. and so currently there's eight, there's eight heroes, six of which are free, the other two are locked, and they're, um, I believe they're 18 bucks each. Yeah. Um, so you can yeah um they're actually they're for them how they're monetizing this it's a free game so it's free to play you can download it on all all consoles or pc so yeah. it's on um, yeah it's pretty much on everything except switch but um they basically are doing the one-off purchases like you can just buy straight up um you know your legendary heroes or whatever but they also have loot boxes which are called apex packs they're doing a battle pass. What comes in the loot box? Is it cosmetics or is it? Yeah, it's all cosmetic. It's all cosmetics, they yeah. made sure that it was all, all cosmetic and that you're guaranteed a rare or a blue oh, really? in every in every crate. And if you buy, can you get crates? Is there any kind of in-game currency where you can kind of get crates? Yeah. Okay. Yep. So you get everything that you can buy in the game with cash. You can buy with money as well. Right. Or with in-game in currency as well. And but do you, is there the same? Is there the same like uh, rarity drop percent? In, they actually in are pu game. publishing the drop the drop rates. It's all transparent, so you can right. see what you get. But that's what I'm wondering if if there you have a higher probability to get rare items in something you buy with real money versus something you buy with in-game currency. Because I know they're the not way. lying. Then no. <laughs> I know the way because I know the way PUBG works and like the in-game uh, loot crates that you can buy with the currency are like it's kind of not very good. I was gonna say piss and it's piss. Yeah. Because it's yeah. I mean, it literally just sucks. You're you're like just constantly getting brown boots. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like yeah, this so, is great. But well, I they said I think if times. you if you buy forty five of these Apex packs, mm -hmm. you're guaranteed to get a um, a legendary item. No, it's every 30. Guarantee one legendary item for every 30 packs you open. Okay. And they say, and actually because of the way the, the math works out, it's usually a fair bit better than that. Yeah. The worst you'll do is every 30 packs. Right. So you get an you get a, a, a rare in every pack and okay. a legendary every 30. And then what else? Is there like uncommon and common, or is it just go rare to common? Um, I probably don't know. I th it has epic and legendary, rare and... You're common, so that's that's what I've seen. In, in okay. this. So unless there's, they add something since this was written, right. that's what you got. Yeah, and so I mean, my the only thing is like I I really like the the hero shooter concept. I personally am not a huge fan of Overwatch, mm -hmm. but I am a huge fan of the Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege, mm -hmm. which I still think uh, personally. Is one of the best for, is one of the contenders for the best first person shooter that's out right now. Why? And I also why? Why is that? Why is it so I much think, better than? Or why do you like it more than? The I other think ones? well, I like the gunplay <clears throat> mechanics. Yeah. A lot. I mean, obviously, like I like the tactical approach to um, winning a match. I don't think any of. So the, it's not like run and gun. It is. I mean, it can be. I mean, depending on your play store. Depending on your play style, but usually, yeah. I mean, it's a lot more leaning. Mm -hmm. It's a lot more angles. Um, I, there's definitely like a, a fast twitch uh, aspect to it, yeah. which is definitely very prevalent. But it's a lot. I mean, it's a lot to do with angles, and it's a little bit more slowed down. And to me, it's a little bit more realistic than your Call of Duty. Fair enough. Yeah. I mean, but I also, but I also like the way that they run and and manage the game itself and do mm -hmm. updates and patches because everything is completely free. Yeah. All the new characters are unlockable with in-game currency, and they they um, they release like new maps and and two new characters every season. Mm -hmm. But it's all free, 
And if you decide to pay money or like if you have the pass, the season pass, you just get the players a week early. Gotcha. But it's like one week, you know, if you wait seven days and you have enough right. currency built up in, in game, you mm -hmm. can just buy and unlock the new characters. Mm -hmm. So it's just like I just feel like it's very fair for people who potentially... But I mean, yeah, the people who don't want to shell out the money, but people who also potentially don't have the money at that time yeah. to say, okay, but I still love this game and I still want to keep playing it. And I just feel like they do just a really good job, like keeping a, a, a seasonal update gotcha. and stuff like that. And I just, you know, I, now, I if just you get, like it. If you're getting uh, in matches with randoms, so how does that work out if they have no mic? Is it a... Is I mean, it it's, like, it's like any it's like any other game when if you're playing with randoms who potentially aren't as good as you and, and don't communicate. Well, see now that's what the nice thing about this this game is they have their their unique thing is that oh, yeah. they have the ping system. Right. I started is, to go into a black or like Call of Duty and yeah versus Rainbow Six Siege. Right. But I feel like this is a different piece entirely because it's battle royale. Right. That's yeah. true. And but no, but I, I I'm definitely interested to play it. Like I mean, I really like playing um, different battle royales. Yeah. I'm obviously I obviously enjoy I don't know if it's obvious, but I enjoy PUBG a lot more over Fortnite. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of like the RNG shotgun blasts and stuff like that. I, I I'm not the hugest fan of, of <laughs> battle royales, period. But mm -hmm. I play my fair share. I've played them all just because I you well, know we played PUBG together. Yeah, you did really well. Oh, we should play again. We should. We my should. My brother actually plays PUBG too. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's that's assuming I'm not off uh, at watching concerts in Fortnite, that's which true. happened this weekend. Very because uh, Marshmallow played the first ever live concert in a video game, so they made history. Imagine watching the Super Bowl. Ha. <laughs> I mean, so this is kind of a, a fun thing. I like hopped in and they had this uh, a special game mode where it basically had um, the the concert that you could you could go into and they dropped you. And basically, the whole week leading up to it, they had this. Um, like, there's the football field, it's called Pleasant Park, mm -hmm. and uh, they were building the stage throughout the week, so it was more oh, built really? every day. And then, uh, and there was flyers around the map. Like one of the the in-game challenges was to find the the concert posters that oh, were like really? advertising it. So if you spotted it, then and searched it, then it gave you in-game items like you could get a, a marshmallow um, pickaxe okay so and then uh, and then so it dropped you in the concert like had a little countdown timer and then once it went live um, everybody's guns turned mm -hmm. off so you couldn't you couldn't shoot anybody anymore oh, really? and so they just started playing the song and there was like holograms everywhere and mm -hmm. and then uh, it was pretty cool because like as the beat dropped like he said, like, everybody jump, and then yeah. they gave you moon physics, so you started, like, jumping oh, all really? over the place. And, like, uh, then they turned on anti-gravity, and you started just, like, hovering around in the crowd, and then they, like, How switched. many people were in the server? Uh, well, just so they had instance, like, oh. so you had a, that holds up to 100 people. Yeah. Right, and you could just run away, so there was a, a few people who were just off, not, yeah, doing not, whatever. yeah, but it looked like there was a good, like, 60 people when yeah. I was there yeah that, and but that's on you know wait so does the game what does it just start up where you're at the concert or was it, it like, drops you from the plane right, right above the the thing oh, and then so everybody just drops yeah and there. it basically okay. makes a race to the, the point right where you need to be so okay. it's like first there and how, long, squad. So how long are you at, at this concert in the concert? uh they played about four or five songs it was about 20 minutes it was, and then does the game start and yeah and then so after oh, after it ended yeah. they um they popped everyone into the sky with like fireworks going oh, off okay. and like yeah. you fell in and then it was like mm -hmm. game on yeah. Let's see who could win that. That's cool. Yeah. That makes me think of uh, Ready Player One. Yeah, it's kind of. be like that in the future. That's what concerts will be. Right, Just exactly. Cool space. It was nuts because it's like they're doing stuff like they had like, you know, the, what is it, the drone fireworks or whatever, but it was like way more elaborate because there's millions of them and like holograms of marshmallow dancing while you're falling like they sh shoot you into the sky and then you're falling and he's just hologramming next to you and you're like this is nuts Fortnite is gonna just be expanded until it becomes the oasis <laughs> right i know it's <laughs> nuts yeah. i i like fortnite and like i like how much how involved they are like with the game and with their fan base and just i just not a huge fan of, of the actual game itself i i understand that it's very arcadey and right. yeah. but i mean you, you have to give it to them for their um their community 
community engagement. Right. Like there's yeah. something going yeah. on every couple of days. Yeah. It's, so. No, yeah, that's true. Like, I, yeah, I mean, I think just for me, I think if more games did that, that would be dope. Yeah. So take note, developers. Come yeah. on. Well, I'd say, like, I mean, I like the building mechanics and stuff like that, and being able to to acquire resources, and it's just like I'm just. I don't know. I just I wasn't a huge fan of like the, the the gunplay mechanics that they had and stuff, and like player movement and right. You know, I just it's feel like it's kind of restricting that whole thing. And so it's like at when you, when you kind of break it down to a shooter, yeah. I'm just not kind of a, I'm not a fan of it. So yeah. But I do respect that. I do respect like the work that they put in yeah. uh, with their fan base and with their community, and I, I respect what they're doing. Gotcha. Um, I just kind of like it more geared towards PUBG, like that's just kind of like the player. I haven't played I... PUBG or Fortnite. No? Ever. Yeah. Not a Battle Royale fan? Thing? No, not, I mean, I, I, don't know, I don't even know if it's that or if it's just like I never had really had the opportunity. Uh -huh. And and being living where I am, like having like really crappy internet, yeah. I figure it's not even really worth it to try. Right. So I just didn't really think much about it. Yeah. I will say though, um, that uh, Sounds Like Pizza on YouTube, Yeah. that dude has he, he has like a friend or something on there and he can do like uh, the perfect uh, inter um, with like a voice modulator he does like the Venom voice oh, okay. in a Venom movie yeah. and he just goes down there and like trolls little kids <laughs> with the Venom voice makes it sound all scary and stuff in Fortnite <laughs> oh, no. that, was, that was pretty enter entertaining so I'll give Fortnite that <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> fair enough fair enough so uh, the next thing that I uh, was doing uh, well what did you I guess let's roll into the, the playlist real quick just to see what we're, we've all been playing this week Okay, I think we could transition right into Anthem, because I don't think anybody's been... I've been playing that this week. I have not played yeah. it at all. I yeah. tried to play it today. Yeah. Yeah, and it's I don't over. know what I was thinking, yeah. I mean, I was just busy doing other stuff. So why don't you just tell us about Anthem? All right, well, Anthem I, is wait, awesome. Right, I, I was in the hub. You were? Uh, for, like, for Yeah, I tried to send you an invite. You sent me like three. Yeah. Yeah, I just... Got I, the, the menus are a little clunky, so I was trying to figure though, out... Though. Yeah, I was trying to figure out when... Uh, you know how how exactly to send out invites and and, mm -hmm. and all that, but um, uh, I don't know the the game so far. It looks gorgeous. Um, when you're in, so it's basically the, they they say it's your story, our world, right? So there's two different kind of game modes. There's the first person view when you're in Fort Tarsus, right, where you're you're walking around and you're doing your typical like dialogue with with people and and they send you on your mission. So you're talking and you have you know. The dialogue option seemed really, really simple. It was like either be be kind of like abrasive or be like more on the nice side. Passive. Yeah, yeah. So it's like yeah. So those are like the two options that typically came up with the the one mission that they gave me. Mm -hmm. So because I did try to talk to a couple people in the hub, and they were like, "This is unavailable." Yes, everything was <laughs> un unavailable except for like the very specific mission that they yeah. wanted you to go down. So. It looks like once that opens up, there'll be a lot to do. Um, was it the typical um, like Mass Effect Bioware uh, the dialogue wheel? wheel? No, it was L2 or R2 huh. for your two options for dialogue. So it was really simplistic. So if you're expecting a really in-depth... That doesn't um, really seem like your game, our world. <laughs> yeah, I know. So, well, so, so the concept with your game, right, is that you have your, you're the only one in Fort Tarsus when you're in there. It's mm -hmm. just you. And so you go and you get your missions and you talk to people and you engage and do whatever it is for your story. Mm -hmm. And then once you hop into your suit, then yeah. you go out into our world, yeah. which is where you, all the action happens and right. you become Iron Man and you're yeah. super bad so, at uh, In our world, are there like basically random players just like everywhere? Uh, so or is no, it, like instant, it, is it, it was instanced and it's uh, yeah. teams of four. Right. So if you just go in, it'll pop you into a server with three other people, mm -hmm. and yeah. and that's basically it. So yeah. it was it felt uh, empty, but the world is not so huge that it was a problem. Right. It, but so it's never really like Destiny though, where you're at the hub and there's a bunch of people. Right. There, there's yeah. only you in when you're at the hub, right. getting your stories so, yeah. and doing your so missions. So it's much more like kind of Monster Hunter world. Yeah. It's just like the most relevant game I can think of where it's kind of like... Yeah. You're never... the only Because the only place... Did you play Monster Hunter World? No. My, the only place where... 
Well, I guess there's really never. There was supposed to be some like on the, like the party boat or whatever, but they that didn't happen. Yeah, so it's just that's you what I thought. Well. But it's like when you're in town, it's just you. But then there's like a there's a jobs board and where you can like you can see what other people are doing and join them if that's an option. Uh, no, you they can, had you can like post, but it's like instance. That you know, one you, you could go of, into the social bubble and see what your friends are doing. Right. And so I, I if you if you have say you did a, like that that mission that I'm doing uh-huh. like three games ahead. Yeah. Whoever is whoever is the host of the party like the mm-hmm. squad leader they basically see all the missions that anyone's had so mm-hmm. like ones that you've just done you'll see mm-hmm. when you go into the mission picker you pick one and everyone does that mission regardless of whether or not they're caught up or not so can, like but can you jump into games with randoms yes you can so okay yeah so because well, that's good for like but for you can people. also jump in with your friends even right. if they're way out leveling you but do you have uh, so are all you and your friends already like in a group automatically uh so you can squat up while you're in fort tarsus and right. then once you launch the expedition then you're in the server right and so if there's room but i had a problem where it was like i wanted to go into free play yeah. and i so went to send you an invite and it's like well the server's yeah. gonna populate because i can't go you can make private matches for for certain missions, but free play you can't do that. So well, I'm not you can't exactly. Have a squad. Yeah, you can't. Well, you can squad up, but it has to be beforehand. You can't pop in. Oh, um, like well, that's it, okay. It I mean, populates with that, Yeah, I mean that's how it was for Monster Hunter World. Was there, there was kind of some yeah. know-how and, and knowledge you needed to have prior to actually like joining a squad. Yeah, but the combat was really good. I mean, yeah. it was it was solid. It, it felt exactly right. Like steering and shooting and all that stuff was was good. I got frustrated a couple times. Because I wasn't quite there with the controls, but it was just that was all on me. Was there like an aim assist or anything like that, or is it all kind of just free flow? No, it's free flow, and and there's weak points, and it's got the you know the damage floaties with the numbers that pop, I and like when you hit though. crits, it like changes yeah. color and lets you know. So I mean, it, it was. If the, you could compare it to any other game, Destiny. Destiny. Hmm. Yeah, it's pretty much Destiny, um, with like jetpacks. With jetpacks, yeah, it's like if Destiny had a better movement system, like their floating yeah. jumping was okay, but this just make like turns it up a notch. Yeah. But um, lag was really bad. Like if uh, I was playing on a wi- Wi-Fi connection, yeah. and the lag was just terrible, and they have the bug where a bunch of the enemies are disappearing. So like you'll be shooting these, you'll be working on this big boss, and then all of a sudden I'll just whoop, mm. pop out of existence. So for someone with DSL, I most certainly should not get it on launch. That's correct. <laughs> That's correct. Yeah, I'll bring it over and we can try it and see how it plays. But it was I'm bad. Sure it would be terrible. Yeah. So, so that's that's what I got going on with that. Um, well, I mean, is there anything else that's important that you think you should say about Anthem? Because I feel like that's a pretty big title that was. Yeah. Anything else to talk about? Well, weekend. again, um, when I was doing the raid, mm-hmm. um, I jumped in with no gear. And that was a huge mistake. I was dying over and over again. Yeah. And I had to I had to leave the game because I couldn't find the option to leave the mission. Okay. And I was like, why the hell can't I get out of this? We had three people dead and one person AFK. Yeah. Um, like, just not in the That's zone always, at all. And it's like, great. you can't revive because you're in, like, the boss zone. So you either wipe as a squad or, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, it's like, wow, it's dungeons. Yeah, so, like, I had to literally quit out of the whole game just to get out of the mission because... Because it, and then uh, my buddy Ed, who was playing with me, he he ended up blue screening when I did that because I think it was the squad leader. Oh yeah. So that wasn't great. So that's why I said uh, this might be a, a month to pick up for me because of these bugs. But they seem to have said that they have a lot of these fixes in place. They just didn't put them in the game because it's a stable build and they don't want to break stuff more during the demo. So, which I buy. That sounds that sounds plausible to me. So, yeah. but um, m- minus that, I mean the the boss fights. Once I actually got gear, the 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 loot, like you know, it's a shooter looter, mm-hmm. and that loop of getting gear and enhancing your stuff yeah. is really good. So, it um, I I have really high hopes for this game. So there's a, a yeah. few nitpicky options. Uh, my my demo experience overall was probably a seven out of ten. I enjoyed Ooh, the it. Numbers game. Oh, nice. uh, uh, uh. <laughs> if I had to just like sum it all up in, in, in a, that yeah, it was no, good. It good. has some serious drawbacks, but the gameplay more than makes up for it. So I have really high hopes. So please, yeah. please be good. Anyways, um, yeah, I hope it's kind of like Destiny. One, the original Destiny was like when it comes out because when yeah. I played the original Destiny for the first time, I was like, this is amazing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, the story was just a little a little lacking, but it was good. I think yeah. I think Destiny won by the last its last year 
uh, when the Taken King came out, I think. Yeah. Um, or no. Yeah, the, it makes sense. No, there was that. There was that. Um, that Iron One. It was. It was the, the Iron Banner. Uh, well, it, it expanded on the Iron Banner lore and mythos. Oh, I see. Um, but uh, yeah, Taken King. I don't think was the last one. I think that was. It was. Um, I can't remember the name of it now. But anyway, it, it went into like all the Iron Banner stuff, the mythology of that, and um, the uh, the the infection that was spreading. Um, and but like Destiny One, like after that expansion, that was that was really like a well put mm -hmm. together yeah. title. It, it had it had a lot to it. And it kind of sucked that you had to like keep on buying the new DLC to stay up to date with certain things, but at the same time, it's like, that was kind of the model that, that they were going for. Right, they didn't want so, to resell a new game every every year like some people. Yeah. So instead, they, they sold the expansion pack. <laughs> Call <instead>. of Duty. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Rise of Iron? Yeah, Rise of Iron. That was the last yeah. one. Yeah. And then so the other new game that just came out too since we've had our last podcast was um, Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom Hearts 3, 14 years in the making. Yeah, I thought it was 13. 14. Whatever. Anyway, but so I actually, I don't, so nobody else played it. Nope. Did anybody nope. watch any videos? Uh, nope. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I actually had a chance to play it. I didn't purchase it, but I played uh, for about two hours at a friend's house. Um, and yeah, because it had taken so long, um, I think there was kind of like a... It gives you enough time to forget about what has happened, um, unless you're like a hardcore... Did you play any of the other house. previous ones? I played one and some of two. Okay. And I played 1.5 or 2.5 or whatever it was. <laughs> it's not confusing with, at all. No, yeah. no. Well, because they had they had like they had the the other releases too. I think for like um, like some of the handheld consoles, just kind of like those little mix ups or whatever. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's kind of confusing. And then I mean, a lot of the beginning, it like is is kind of just. Um, is telling you kind of like what happened and in case you forgot so like there was a lot of that uh, of just kind of like you, you being brought up to speed I, I obviously did get to some gameplay eventually and um, I mean it's really solid I, I just think the, the beginning the whole beginning part from what I understand is a tutorial like so you go to the the realm of Hercules um, the Disney the Disney World Hercules yeah. and uh, but, but not Tarzan. I guess, no. Because <laughs> they, they lost the rights to that. Oh, really? Yeah. No, I didn't. It was only in the first one. Yeah. But I mean, but I guess um, from what my friend was telling me who had progressed farther, that, that basically when you um, get through the Hercules world, you uh, you basically are, are then presented with the... Uh, Intro or like or like the Kingdom Hearts logo is like now you're starting the game. So I think like the Hercules world is kind of like a tutorial. Okay. Um, and then I mean kind of like it's the village in Resident Evil Four. Yeah. Kind <laughs> or you, of you get beheaded before you even get the, the, the title you, screen. Would you would you say it's it, it's worth the 14 year wait from what you saw? Well, I just I don't think I got to where I enough to I don't think I played enough. Not to make that ruling. Yeah. I mean, obviously, like, if you're a hardcore fan, obviously you're already going to have it. Um, I did, I mean, I really enjoyed it. I mean, the combat was a lot similar to what there was before. Mm -hmm. Now there was kind of, there was kind of like this f different forms you can go into as Sora. And it's just like, that's where it just got confusing to me. And like, I think if I would have spent more time, because the biggest thing I noticed was with the combat, um... Which, like I said, is very similar to what it was before, but now they've added, they add more of these, like, team attacks and, like, these team combinations that are earned after um, you get kills and you attribute points to, like, this multiplier. Mm -hmm. But it was, like, basically, like, I got to a point in, in like, a, a mini boss battle to where a triangle lets you go into like the, your second form or your ultimate form and like literally the form I was in I forget what it's called but you're all black and I just could start mashing attack and like my guy would just literally teleport in front of the boss and like just be whipping the keyblade noob and then I would yeah that is exactly what he looks like it is, is uh, noob Saba. and then um, but then I'm so then I'm because I'm just I'm just dealing damage like that and then uh, I'm granted another multiplier to go into like a team attack and like I had Hercules 
Goofy and Donald, and like we turned into a boat, and then it's like the nah, probably not a lot of people are gonna get this, but like the ride from Sea Breeze with the, the you know where it's like the pirate like, or whatever, the pirate yeah, ship that yeah, the, the little and like we're just shooting bubbles at this dude, and then like I shot bubbles at him for like three, like I don't know, probably like thirty seconds or forty five seconds, and then and then I defeated him, yeah. but it's like literally I'm just like. It, for me, it was just like, I don't know what's going on, but I know what the attack button is, and I can see that you're telling me that I can hit triangle for a team attack. And it's like, you know what I mean? Like, once you kind of start to earn those multipliers and, and earn those attack rewards, it's like, it just becomes kind of like convoluted and confusing, and I'm not sure what's going on. Like, I knew I was dealing damage, but I don't. Like, I, I don't know why I can turn into the ship right now. <laughs> like, the other ones I had before was, like, a, it would be a team attack with, like, Goofy. Mm -hmm. And, I would you know, we'd, like, ride at some fireworks, and then I would, like, bomb Goofy at somebody. And, like, it was a big explosion. Like, it was cool. But, like, I knew uh, because, well, one, I'm getting the icon that's telling me I can do the team attack. But then, like, if you go towards Donald, there would be one, like, a different one. And then if you go towards Goofy, if you get close to in a certain proximity of him, then you can do the team attack with Goofy. Now, I haven't and played so, any of the other ones. Is it the, the combat pretty similar to the yeah. past games? So it's yeah, I mean, like, the, the, slashy. Yeah, the attack jump, the way the targeting works. I mean, there's shortcuts for your magic and stuff. And, like, I mean, it's like it's all real. That part is all really clean, and, like, it's, it's done really well. Mm -hmm. Like I said, when I got to... Unlo like unleashing the the other forms and then like the one team attack when I was with Hercules but I mean see like that's why I just don't think I just got I just don't think I got far enough with it it's like that was probably a combo that you get with Hercules Goofy and Donald or something and, and then Sora oh, I see. who I think you're probably stuck with the majority of the game gotcha this is all Sora I'm not stuck but like he's a cool character but right like, he's your main protagonist so right um but like yeah it's just like why I don't even understand why there's this boat because like, I don't think Hercules was really ever on a boat. No? <laughs> I don't know. Do I don't know, remember, maybe. Like, it, just, it just reminds me of like why I never really got into the, those <laughs> games. Because like, it, it just, the, whole, the whole concept of that, to me, like, just to me, Ooh. sounds kind of like just too silly for my liking. Like, even, when, uh, even yeah. when the first and second game came out, I was just like... Uh, I uh, like it though. Like I like being able to bash Disney characters like with a keyblade <laughs> right. and like stuff like and like shoot fireballs or, or cast spells on. Like I like it. Like I mean, I really enjoyed the first one. And like I, there was definitely a point in time, like especially when they were going to uh, release with the the PS4 and they were going to release Kingdom Hearts with it mm -hmm. or whatever. It's like I was really wanting to play Kingdom Hearts. Like I was really in the mood to play Kingdom Hearts. Then yeah. they're just like, oh, well, you can wait like another year. <laughs> Come to find years. out it's five years. Yeah. yeah. But it's like, you know what I mean? But there was definitely like a big itch to scratch for me. And I think, I think maybe for some players, I think they just went too long. But it's like, you know what? And in, in the... Like all things considered, I'm sure it's probably for the best that they that they spent that much time on it. Right. You know sure. what I mean? Because it's like if they release something too early, it's like any game. It's like I know it sucks to be to for a, a release to get pushed back, but it's like you have to understand that like it's probably getting pushed back for a good reason. Yeah, it's usually for the best. You know what I mean? No, I want to yeah. play it now. Like I mean, yeah. right? Now. I mean, could you could you wait. imagine like what would have happened if if Rockstar released Red Dead Two or when it, yeah. when they initially were going to yeah. like a year before? Right. You know, they, they probably added a lot of polish to that game before it yeah. came out because it looked yeah. great when it came out. Yeah. 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 Yeah, but I mean, and even, like, but also, too, like, I love early access games, and I mean, like, when they work and stuff, yeah. like, I've definitely played some that sucked, but it's like, you know, I, you know, there's been early access games that I really like to play, like, I, I mean, I enjoyed DayZ when it was out, which, I mean, there's a ton of, um, uh, there's a ton of stuff out there about that, but, uh, you know what I mean, I like the early access because it's like you're playing a game at, as long as they continue working on it, I like it, because I think, it's I like, think early access works really well for, for... Like not not like the huge games, but right. for like yeah. the the mid tier or like right. indie level, yeah. that that early access works a lot because yeah. the especially for like indie dubs because they can they can take in all that feedback and make right. changes on the fly. Yeah. But right. like yeah. the big time developers, if they put out early access titles, right. like we saw the same thing with like Red Dead Online beta. Everybody's like, yeah. oh, why does the online mode suck? It's like, well, right. I mean, it's, it's a beta. A beta. Yeah. yeah, their focus was on single player for the last right. eight years. Right. Yeah. 
But that's that's what I like is like being able to play a game while they're still updating it and patching it because then it like it just feels like you I'm mean like more... all AAA titles these days. <laughs> no, what was the one? Of the, I think one of the battlefields was really really bad before. I'm trying to think of some uh, hardline. They, yeah, I'm trying to think of some games that were released like way before they should have been. Yeah, and I know like that was a huge one. But but you know what I mean? Like with the early access or like the the alpha games where it's like you know they're they're updating it as you go and it's uh, like every Assassin's month, you know? Creed Unity. <laughs> that was a bad one. Oof. That was a bad one. But yeah. but that that was the problem with that was that they they released it um, as if it was finished, and it, and that was all just Ubisoft like forcing them out the door with it. Yeah, they're just like, no, it's coming out this month every year. Much it, like Anthem, you better this month. <laughs> There's, yeah. there's no delaying the Assassin's Creed games. Right, it's like TikTok. But that's the yeah, thing. I mean, if they, but it, but if if they if they pushed back Anthem right now, let's just say uh, you know with no date or whatever, they just said like you know next month or two months. Like, would you really be mad at them? Uh, well, having no. seen yeah, what's having seen? I would love the, that because then I, everyone would start when I'm planning on starting. You know what I mean? Well, but they, but you know, but then it's like you know that they're gonna be like they're gonna iron out something. Yeah. That that the, wasn't the, working. The, That's like a, probably right. a critical game changer. The yeah. biggest or, the biggest concern that I have with Anthem is that they're they're gonna have the same issues that, for instance, like Destiny had when it first launched. When when it first launched, like everybody was jumping on that Destiny wagon, yeah. and then after it first launched, they lost a lot of players because it wasn't very good and it wasn't very fleshed out at launch. So yeah. like it, Anthem, I feel like if there are too many issues, then they're gonna lose a lot of their potential player base because yeah. of that. Right. They they need to come out the gate strong, yeah. and they need to come out the gate with like every all their ducks in a row. Everything's got to be on yeah. point because right. you can't you can't play that that you can't toe that line anymore as a developer. You can't take those chances, especially like yeah. an always online game like that. Uh -huh. yeah. You can't you can't risk it. Well, it's got to be. Didn't. They waited 14 years <laughs> to release their game, and it's done, right, Chris? Yeah, it's it done. felt pretty done. No, no bugs. Yeah, it's done. I like I said, I just didn't get to play it enough, but I know where you're going with this. Uh, do you? Yeah, let's talk about the question of the the week. Oh, I can't <laughs> talk about my clear B playthrough. All right, we we should have, but I think we just rocked too much time out because we're that's at, fine. We're I finished Clear B. It was great. Go play it. Finish Resident Evil Two. Kick its butt. Well, that'll be the extra Kill content. The we'll 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 wrap back around to that, and that'll be the uh, the Patreon con. <laughs> no, just me. I'm just me kidding. Me, like, oh, yeah. about Resident Evil. Yeah. We're not on Patreon because we're not. Whose money responsibility grubbers. is it to be on Patreon? That'd be me. Okay. Uh, I'll make I'll make the subscribe score, so we'll take all the money from that. Perfect. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. So yeah. So um, question of the week. Um, we didn't post it last week because, well, I wasn't sure there'd be enough people to even hear it. So. Well, I think what we decided is if no one ever answers our question of the week, we'll we're just, just gonna keep, keep re asking, asking it until yeah, we get an answer. Like so if you plan. wanted to change, please answer yeah. our question of the week. So. Uh, we should start with question of the week too. No, we shouldn't. Well, I, yeah. I, yeah, maybe we should. I think. We Tell should us. Should beginning. we start with question of the week? That's, That's our first our question. question. <laughs> well, actually, it kind of is because last week and this week we're asking what can we do to improve? How could we do the show better? Mm -hmm. Could there be some pacing issues? I realize that I need to get better at my segues. So sorry, okay, guys. Okay. What should um, I do about my face? Yeah. <laughs> what should he mask. do about his his mask. face? Should we have a surgical mask? Paper Michael. bag it. <laughs> Just like paper bag. We'll draw I got the hat so it. I could like yeah, hide a little bit. Perfect. Um, and then uh, yeah. So what can we do to improve? And then the the gaming associated question is: What uh, gameplay achievement and or trophy are you most proud of? So that is the the question of the week and the challenge of the week is to send us a screenshot from whatever you're playing this week. Anything that you think looks cool or some, something that you think is funny or anything, just Even send us... Even if it's like Barbie's Playhouse. Just yeah, yeah, especially was, if it's Barbie's Playhouse. I was playing some uh, Magic the Gathering. <laughs> Gathering. Gathering. I was playing Magic the Gathering 2015 on my Android. Yeah? Yeah. See, if you took a screenshot, sent it our way, it'd I get featured. I don't know if I'm allowed. Because I'm part of the podcast. <laughs> I feel like that's Conflict a of interest there? Yeah, that'd be kind of... <laughs> I'm going to sign into someone else's YouTube. And... <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So yeah, so send us a, send us a screenshot or a, a clip of what you're playing. Which is week. funny because I think in um, in Kingdom Hearts they have like a camera. Oh, you know what it is? It's a it's a mobile phone, but you can do, take selfies with Sora. Mm -hmm. And so like now that I saw another article about like Sora being the king of... 
not only the Keyblade, but also of selfies. Oh, nice. <laughs> Which is kind of funny. But it's funny because you could actually do that in um, Red Dead uh, Redemption 2. Yeah, with the, the, the old-timey camera. camera. Yeah, you yeah. could do like selfie mode that, with that was it, funny. which was really fun. Yeah. And um, but I think that just about wraps it up. So that I guess wraps it up. This has been read. another episode, episode two. Thanks for joining us. I think it's four. Epic trash. 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 Trash.